Hey, good to see you again. In this video, we're going to talk about hypokalemia. That's low potassium in your blood. Now, you might already know that you need a lot of potassium. You need close to about five grams. That's 4,700 milligrams every single day. And that's like seven to 10 cups of vegetables. Some people never reach that point, but you need a lot of potassium. 98% of the potassium is inside the cell. So by the time it shows up deficient outside the cell in your blood, you're pretty low simply because the cellular reserves um, actually are there to back up if there's a problem in the blood. So some of the symptoms of a low potassium situation would be fatigued, leg cramps, because potassium is the main electrolyte for the muscle and the nervous system, okay? Weakness, constipation, because you have muscles in your colon and you have nerves, arrhythmias, like atrial fibrillation, um, heart palpitations, because the electrical system in the heart needs potassium. And then we have high blood pressure. So in other words, you need potassium to keep blood pressure low. But look at this. One of the causes of low potassium in the blood is diuretics. What do people use diuretics for? Lower blood pressure. You see the problem there? High cortisol. So when you have high cortisol from stress or, or taking a steroid, you're going to deplete your potassium too. Diarrhea can do it, vomiting, dietary, it's, you just don't have enough in your diet. So if you're not consuming enough potassium in the diet, you need to start increasing uh, the amount. Uh, then we also have a ketogenic diet. So this is why we talk about the keto adaptation. You have a lot of like keto flu or keto rashes or um, all, any symptoms like headaches that can occur in the transition phase usually means that you need more potassium or electrolytes or B vitamins. But with a ketogenic diet, you use more potassium in the transition of fat burning. Diabetes. So here, this would be like, diabetes is like the opposite of the ketogenic diet. So when you have diabetes or pre-diabetes, like an insulin resistance, you have high insulin, what's gonna happen, that's gonna deplete potassium too and block potassium from going inside your cells. Then we have something called alkalosis. This is not the whole body being alkaline. It means that your blood is excessively alkaline. Now, normally your blood is alkaline, but this is excessively too alkaline. Make sense? Well, guess what? Low potassium will cause this. And by the way, high cortisol will cause this too. In fact, almost every single person who has hypokalemia also has alkalosis. So they go hand in hand. In fact, the symptoms of alkalosis and hypokalemia are almost identical. Um, then we have sugar. Sugar will deplete potassium and especially high fructose corn syrup, okay? So the theme of this video would be consume more potassium or if, you're, if there's any of these that you're, like if you're on diuretics, for example, well, you might want to increase more potassium get your blood pressure improved so you can come off that stuff. All right, thanks for watching.